So welcome to video three in the reading of The Location of Culture by Homie K. Baba. Um, if you haven't seen video one, I'd recommend you to go there and take a look at um, the way that, like the introduction of the book which on which it is based, it provides some of the general ideas for Homie Baba's work, like hybridity, um, third space, mimicry, um, interstitiality, etc., and whereas the following chapters analyze a specific problem within post-colonialism one at a time. So the second chapter deals with identity. The third chapter, called The Other Question, Stereotype, Discrimination, and the Discourse of Colonialism, deals with the problem of um, understanding the so-called other within colonialism through stereotype, which is supposed to be a, a sort of epistemological solidification of our knowledge of the other in a nice little snapshot that shows you in one fixed image everything you really need to know about them, which of course is both the justification for discrimination within colonialism, but it also has an essential role within the real-time, moment-by-moment unfolding of discrimination in colonialism as a process. And yet, his analysis of stereotype is going to be a good deal more complicated than anything you would get just from the media, and in fact is going to rely on some fluency in Freudian concepts, which I'll um, try, to pro uh, try to provide some background on in the course of this video. So he starts by noting that um, stereotype is a sort of ideological construction of otherness, a type of epistemology of the other, a type of knowledge of the other, which seeks fixity in its representation. Like I said, it would, it would try to provide a nice little stable snapshot that shows you everything you need to know about the other in all of its essential characteristics, not only under colonialism, but sort of a an image of what that other has always been. Um, the idea that it, yeah, history hasn't really unfolded out there in the heart of darkness or whatever. It's, it's just always been that way. And the, the paradox of fixity in post-colonial discourse, the way that fixity is a paradoxical mode of representation is that in trying to provide both the rigidity of an unchanging order and the disorder of the other as inherently characterized by both the, the disorder of violent tendencies which could explode at any moment into savagery and cannibalism and and if we weren't there uh, they would just fall into anarchy that's one thing which is captured in stereotype but also the need for constant repetition it's never established enough the knowledge of the other it constantly has to be repeated once again right and he's going to show that stereotype therefore far from being just a snapshot that tells you everything you need to know vacillates from the already known, right, to the anxiously repeated impossibility of it ever being fully already known enough. And therefore, you need a Freudian concept to talk about this inherent c conflict at the heart of stereotype, and that concept is ambivalence. So if you look at a both a literal interpretation of Freud and a more symbolic interpretation, it, it's, it doesn't matter for this video really that much for the moment, um, which one you're taking, either the literal father as some, somebody that the, the um, early stages of the ego both despises as cutting into his pursuit of his fulfilling his desires by um, posing the no of the father, which of course in French is uh, le nom du père, is a play on words for it's the no, but it's also the name. The two words sound the same in French. Um, he does He does hate that introduction of, of a barrier to desire, which is the law, but he also kind of loves it. Uh, he kind of also wants to model his ego off of that intervening force, and therefore it's inherently ambivalent. It's not just one or the other. It's not first one and then only later, secondarily, the other. It's always inherently both. And the ambivalence at the heart of stereotyping also is both difference and origin, a derision, and desire, not one originally and then the other, it's this conflicted desire for both. And therefore, Edward Said's distinction within Orientalism between, you know, the portrayal of the Orient and, and the knowledge, especially of the Orient, is both like the scientific knowledge objectively captured 
that is a form of learning that is the Orientalist has scientifically and objectively captured the Orient exactly as it is and give us a kind of learning about it, but also paradoxically enough gives us the Orient as a site of dreaming and fantasy and gives us portrayals of the Orient that are more like psychoanalytic projections of his own erotic desire and his own sort of fears of the violent other, etc. The paradox, which is nicely captured um, in Edward Said, uh, is still something which Baba critiques as underrepresenting the return of the repressed as a, an inherent feature in post-colonial stereotyping. So stereotypes not only portray the other as, you know, stable, unchanging, there's no history unfolding over there, that's just, if you look at them now, that's how they've always been for thousands of years, but also, paradoxically, portrayals of the other as uh, exploding any moment into savagery, cannibalism. If you read like the 19th century portrayals of colonized peoples, there's this myth that they're engaging in, in, in cannibalism like regularly. And then uh, of course, the idea of the other as being so inherently explosively lustful that, uh, you know, they're a constant danger to uh, our civilized women. And then, of course, they'd fall into anarchy if we weren't down there. The heart of darkness is is so dark that we had to go down there and bring light to it, right? Um, he, he's going to argue that um, the even the median category, as it is in Said, which I'll just quote from Said right now, that sometimes one tends to stop judging things either as completely new or completely well-known. And a new median category emerges that allows you to see new things for the first time as versions of a previously known thing. It's not so much a way of receiving new information as it is a method of controlling what seems to be a threat to some established view of things. And Homi K. Baba is going to argue that this median category um, shows us a move between the recognition of cultural difference and its disavowal by affixing the unfamiliar to something established in a form that is repetitious and vacillates between delight and fear. And this conflict between the supposed presence of, a full, of the fullness of some knowledge and the difference which it's seeking to, to, uh, to hide really goes back to the concept of fetishism in Freud. And that's the term which Baba thinks is essential to understand what, you know, Edward Said is trying to get at with the concept of the meeting category. So a quick overview of Freud um, is that when you have the early development of the ego, you have the assumption at the beginning that that which is present in the father, which is a penis, and that which is present in the kid who's learning about this stuff, a penis, it's assumed that the mother has one too. The moment that there's a discovery that the mother lacks that, so it's not that um, something else is present, it's, it's conceptualized more in terms of the lack of the penis in the mother is recognized as the disruptive moment of sexual difference. And... In order to um, hide or cover over the anxiety that results from that, knowing that that basically could happen to me too. This is the fear of castration, the idea that I could be uh, robbed of my manhood as well or whatever. In order to hide over the anxiety of castration and the epistemological realization of sexual difference, he provides a substitute which in the full positivity and presence that it Seeks, seems to provide, he substitutes this over this uncomfortable fact, right? And this metaphor, because metaphor is a substitution, Homi Baba acknowledges, but says that it never really is fully a metaphor so much as there's always the disruption of metonymy, which rather than substitutes lack, carries it over from uh, one link of the chain onto the next. And therefore, the identification that you might get from providing the presence of the fetish is also never fully uh, realized because he argues that in Lacanian imaginary terms, the identification with the mirror image is not a full self-identical 
accord between what I see and what I am, there's always that trace of difference or discord with that image, which um, manifests itself as a form of aggression, right? So discrimination really needs to be thought of, Homi Baba argues, in terms of fetishism in that the stereotype also seeks to provide the fullness of presence and identification that you find visually or epistemologically offered up as one stable, all-encompassing snapshot of everything you need to know, like I said. But that really is just an attempt to substitute over some inherent ambivalence, discord, difference in the post-colonial situation, right? And there's some other differences as well to Freud, whereas for Freud, the fetish is secret, right? In the colonial situation, skin color, for example, as a distinction between the colonizer and the colonized, is not a secret. Rather, it's the most visible of signifiers, right? Um, whereas this is trying to provide a substitute for what was good, but it was lost, so now I have to have another fetish which is inherently good to take its place. He says that the stereotype in postcolonialism is uh, both conflictually at the same time portraying the other as the docile worker who um, does exactly what they're told, that, so they're useful to us, right, as laborers, but also they're so innocent and childlike and primitive um, that they, they haven't yet gotten reason or whatever, but also at the same time, they're so violent that they need to be forcefully restrained or they would explode into anarchy. And also, oh, they're just duplicitous, so don't trust them too much. You know how they um, tend to lie, etc. And therefore, the stereotype is an inherently impossible object. It is the official, it is at the same time um, many different things because of the irreducible ambivalence at it. And therefore, the official knowledges of colonialism, such as the pseudoscientific descriptions of the other in all of its primitivity, the legal administrative knowledge is needed to uh, perpetuate the day-to-day -day technical functioning of the empire, and the eugenicist um, concerns for finding the superiority of some beings to exist over other, that is imbricated, imbricated I should say, at the very point of production by the fantasy that dramatizes the impossible desire for a pure, undifferentiated origin, but at the same time, as fantasy is inherently split by an irreducible ambivalence and difference, right? And therefore, the stereotyped other reveals not its own content, but rather the fantasy of the position of the master. If you look at the little cartoon drawing at the bottom, um, the knowledge produced by the position of colonialism is not merely a content that reflects the other in all of its essential characteristics. It is rather something which originates, if you could say, it, it is located at the position of enunciation, which is inherently split. And therefore, the very binary of representing merely the other, representing merely the self even, is an impossible binary in that neither of them can actually be captured in stereotype as a type of knowledge. Homi K. Baba's idea, of course, that the encounter of the, the, the positions of the binary is inherently an encounter marked by difference, inherently an encounter marked by ambivalence, difference. And the name of the encounter of course, will be a type of mimicry and chapter four of mimicry and man, the ambivalence of colonial discourse. We'll examine that in greater detail, so stay tuned for the next video.